Chandler guppies are colorful, extremely robust, they reproduce well and therefore certainly a species that is particularly suitable for beginners. The Endler guppy, Poecilia vingae, comes from Venezuela and it is native there in the northern state of Sucre. Here it occurs in two geographically separate areas, in the Laguna de los Patos near Cumaná, as well in the Campoma Lagoon near Cariaco and of course the Rio Oro. There these fish are mainly to find in the shallow waters close to the shore. These areas were originally covered with brackish water but over the years more and more fresh water came in and therefore these waters have been sweetened. This species has an interesting history as it was discovered by Franklin Bond in 1937. Since these fish were considered to be normal guppies, Poecilia reticulata, which at the time had been long described, science gave them no further meaning and the species was forgotten. Even John Endler, who caught his species in the west of the port city of Cumaná in the Laguna de los Patos in the 70s, thought they were normal guppies. The animals then found their way into the hobby via detours and have therefore been called Endler guppies since the 70s. However, this species was not described until 2005 and was given the name Poecilia vingae. The name Endler guppy had already caught on and that's why they are called Endler guppies and not Wingays guppies in the trade. This is not entirely logical, but because it has established itself and spread, it makes no sense to change it. Hybrids or crossbreeds of normal guppies, Poecilia reticulata and Endler guppies, Poecilia vingae, are also known as Endler guppies in the trade. The variety of wild types that occur in Poecilia vingae is already very large, but there are also a considerable number of hybrids so that you can quickly lose track of things and names. With a size of 0.7 to 1.1 inch, this species is not very big and can therefore be called a mini fish. The size of the Endler guppies living in nature is given by Michael Kempkes, one of the scientific describers of this species, with 0.5 to 0.8 inches for the males and with 1 to 1.2 inch in the females. These inches always confuse me. However, it has been shown that the offspring of this species are larger in the aquarium than in nature. I would recommend a total hardness of 10 to 25, a pH value of 7 to 8.5, and the water temperature of 20 to 28 degrees Celsius, which is about 68 to 82 Fahrenheit. There are also many breeders who successfully keep the species and breed the species with deviating values, but I have the best experience with these values. The distinction between the sexes is relatively easy. The males are smaller and much more colorful than the females. In addition to the splendor of colors and the very variable pattern, the male animals can also be recognized by their gonopodium. This is the anal fin which has developed into a mating organ. The females are larger and fuller than the male representatives of this species and rather show a simple grey-green. These animals are known among hobbyists for their courtship behavior, which is extremely worth seeing. In a group of several animals, the males can be seen swimming around the females to court them. It is not uncommon for the females to not even get to the food because they are constantly being courted by the males. Endler guppies should be kept in a group of at least 10 fish. They are fast swimmers and they can be found mainly in the middle and upper regions of the aquarium. Especially when there is a lot of light and warmer temperatures, they become very active and then also show the more beautiful colors. Often it also happens that the males want to impress each other and perform a dance. It is advisable to have a little bit more females than males in the group, because otherwise they suffer from the excess of males. If the females are tired from the constant chase, they withdraw into the dense vegetation to rest mostly on the ground. Most males accept the storm and state and they take care of the other females then. Males have no fixed territories, but you can see how they claim a small part of the aquarium for themselves for a short time. Because endler guppies reproduce fast and often the aquarium can get sometimes very full. You could of course use a group of men only, then you will not have the problem with the increase. It's a lot more difficult with the females. These can be fertilized in advance 
can get up to 10 times juveniles without having had contact with a male. The fish don't miss anything because they have, are kept in a single sex group. They still feel good and show most of their species specific behavior. Handler guppy females are live bearers, of course, they can have offspring about every 2-3 to three months up to 40 babies. In contrast to the common guppies, handler guppies do not chase after their offspring. Guppies are generally considered to be extremely peaceful and sociable aquarium fish and can be socialized with other small non-coarse fish. I would recommend a group of 10 to 12 fish for a nano aquarium. Care for shrimps and snails is also not a problem. Young shrimps could however be eaten. In my aquarium, however, the Neocaridina davidi shrimp were able to reproduce without any problems as there were enough hiding spots. The aquarium for these fish doesn't have to be that big. Aquariums from 55 liters or 15 gallons upwards are sufficient. The substrate can be light or dark and has no great influence on the coloring of the males. I have successfully kept them on both dark and light substrates. The aquarium is densely planted and as the animals also seek out dense plantings in nature and above all the females are given a place to retreat. Juveniles also have a much better hiding place then. In my case the aquarium is completely covered. If the fish are frightened they can shoot through the aquarium and in rare cases even jump out of it. I would recommend the regular water changes and in my aquarium it happens every week and uh, about 50% of the water goes out. These fish are omnivorous. In the aquarium they take all kinds of food, for example high quality granulated food and flake food as well as live and frozen food are well received. They also pluck algae and actually try everything. In my aquarium they get two to three small portions every day of granulates or flake food with a high vegetable content and also live food like red mosquito larvae or daphnia once or twice a week. Thanks a lot for watching, enjoy your endler guppies and your nano aquariums and don't forget to rock and roll!